Good morning and welcome to this, our weekly whole school virtual assembly. As is the norm for me, I'd like to start by saying well done and thank you for following the government guidance to stay at home and in so doing protect the NHS and save lives. Following this guidance has never been more important. And although at the time of filming this whole school assembly, things may be about to change, I'd like to say well done and thank you for following that guidance over the last seven weeks. I'd also like to say well done and thank you for the way in which you've engaged with our remote learning. It today is the 25th day of remote learning. It feels like it's been much longer than that. But over the last 25 days, you have engaged with the work we've been setting. You've been receiving feedback from your teachers and your teachers have been telling me how incredibly, they, in, incredibly impressed they've been with the work that you've been providing them. And to show our recognition for that and to start to get back to normal, whatever that normal might be, from today, we're reintroducing our rewards process. We'll kick this off in a number of stages, but the first stage is that we've reintroduced hot chocolate with the head. Clearly, it wasn't possible to do that properly and share a cup of hot chocolate, but it is possible to do it virtually. And so I'd like to say congratulations to Sophie Black, to Tyler Bateman, to Bailey Simmons, to Ryan McFarland and Natasha Cooley for the work in which and the way in which they have engaged with our remote learning and have really put a huge amount of effort in. Each week, nominations will be received for the hot chocolate with the head from your pastoral leaders. And I will send a personal message to each and every one of you nominated, as I have to Sophie, to Tyler, to Bailey, to Ryan and to Natasha this morning. So to them, congratulations on your nomination. And to all of you, well done and thank you for the way in which you've engaged with our remote learning over the last 25 days. As you'll know, each of these assemblies now takes a theme, a theme of something that's happening in the week ahead. And this week, most poignant at all, of all so far, is that tomorrow, on Tuesday the 12th of May, it's International Nurses Day. It couldn't have come at a better time, and it couldn't be more important than it currently is to say well done and thank you to the nurses and care professionals who have been supporting us through this time. It's interesting, or at least I think it is, that International Nurses Day is on the 12th of May because that's the anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. This year, International Nurses Day coincides with the 200th anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth, and it also coincides with the year 2020 being the year of the nurse and midwife. Indeed, I'm sure that, that this year was chosen because of the 200th anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. But who is Florence Nightingale and what difference did she make to modern nursing? Well, Florence Nightingale was a fundamental figure in nursing as we know it today. She was born, as we now know, on the 12th of May in 1820, 200 years ago tomorrow, and she served in the Crimean War. That was a war that took place between October of 1853 and ended in February of 1856. And during the Crimean War, Florence Nightingale became known as the Lady with the Lamp for the way in which she would visit the, the in sick and injured soldiers during the night time to check that they were well and being looked after. Now, it seems strange today that that wouldn't have been a normal way of working. But up until that point, nursing hadn't been operating in that way. And so, because of the way that Florence Nightingale worked, because of the care that she delivered to those injured and sick soldiers, because of the way that she showed compassion and had their welfare in the highest part of her mind, she became the founder of modern nursing. Indeed, so powerful was the, the work that she'd done and the way that she developed nursing that what became known as the Nightingale Pledge entered into nursing today. 
It's no longer known as the Nightingale Pledge, but is now known as the Practical Nurse Pledge. And this is a pledge that all nurses have to take when they join the profession. There's an extract of it on the screen here. And you can see that that Practical Nurse Pledge or Nightingale Pledge gets to the heart of what nursing is. That nurses say that they, that they would expect that their life be devert, devoted to the service and to the high ideals of the nursing profession. Of looking after the sick. Of putting their welfare to the forefront of all others. Of doing everything they can to support those people and help them to get better. Indeed, the Nightingale hospitals, which have been set up during this coronavirus pandemic, those six hospitals around the country, seven hospitals around the country, I should have said, were named after Florence Nightingale because we know and think of her as a leader in nursing. In fact, the International Nurses Day this week and the clap for our carers, which we take part in every Thursday, is more poignant now than it has ever been. As it coincides with our International Nurses Day week. And let's always remember that nursing, our care and NHS heroes, past and present, have never been more important to us. The role that they provide in ensuring that we are safe and well, that when we're sick and at our weakest, they provide the care and support that makes the difference to our lives, to the lives of our loved ones and to the lives of our nation. So this week, not only tomorrow on Tuesday, the 12th of May, when it is International Nurses Day, but on Thursday, when we clap for our carers, Make it extra special and acknowledge and appreciate the support of nurses, both in the NHS and in our care service, and of the role that they provide for us at this most important time. Day in, day out, with no excuses, as Florence Nightingale her herself said. Have a good week this week. Enjoy engaging with our remote learning. But above all, make sure that you look after yourselves and your loved ones and that you take care and stay safe. 